Welcome to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJC. These podcasts are designed to be used as an additional revision tool. There's nothing new or groundbreaking here, just revision notes in an on-the-go friendly format. Using these alone won't guarantee you an A-star, but they can help you build your confidence to apply this knowledge to your exam questions and your classwork. With that being said, let's get started. Hello and welcome back to another LitCast. Today we're going to be talking about Lenny Small from Of Mice and Men and discussing his character and the themes that he links to and how to write about him in the exam. So Lenny Small, in contrast to his name, is a big man and one of the main characters uh, in Of Mice and Men. He has limited intelligence and relies on George largely to look after him and he's almost defined by this and represents uh, the discrimination demonstrated towards people um, who would have a mental disability in uh, the 1930s. So he copies George in everything George does, he trusts George completely, and that friendship and that relationship is what defines them and makes them unique. And it's a really sort of key contrast to the stark and lonely world of America in the 1930s. So something to remember about Lenny is the difference between his physical and mental capabilities. So he's a powerful man, he's got huge hands which makes him a brilliant farm labourer and he's grown up physically far more so than perhaps someone like uh, Curly who physically is smaller and therefore um, it's a source of uh, great frustration to him and, and he's quite antagonistic towards Lenny as a result of that. But mentally Lenny is still like a child and his innocence is really key to a lot of the decisions that he makes. So Lenny's innocent and asks a lot of innocent questions. Slim immediately sees that Lenny ain't mean which says a lot about Slim as a character, who's someone that we'll talk about in in another episode, but also it gives us that indication that we're meant to understand that Lenny, despite his physical capabilities and then lack of decision-making capabilities, he's deep down a good person, which in a sense adds to the tragedy of the loss of his dreams as a result of his actions. Lenny's condition is never explained. He is called a dum-dum by Curly's wife and Slim thinks he's cuckoo, but George denies that he's insane. But we're never sure exactly what is perhaps wrong with him or what's caused uh, his condition. He does like to stroke and pets off things like mice and Curly's wife's hair and is, again, very much like a child. He's childlike with a favourite blanket or a stuffed toy. So he's quite sentimental in that sense as well. Now, one of the key... Uh, linguistic points of interest with Lenny, I suppose, is his comparison with animals and his identification with animals as well. So he's described like a bear, he looks like a bear, he walks like one, he drags his feet the way a bear drags his paws, and he also eats and drinks like a hungry animal. And this is shown to us right at the start of the novella when we first meet these characters. We're given this comparison, so it's, it's something that really does define his character. He's very possessive over his animals as well, so he never wants to let them out of his sight. And he is like a child in that sense with his favourite toy that we mentioned before with the idea of having favourite things. Lenny is a bit like George's pet. So he follows George around and relies on him for food and he copies things that he does and he he obeys George as well. Um, An example would be at the pool he brings George the mouse like a terrier who doesn't want to bring a ball to its master. So we're shown the the dynamic of their relationship and how it's not one of equals. There's a sense of reliance from Lenny towards George and then there's a sense of the responsibility from George uh, to Lenny. George treats Lenny like a pet as well. So he orders him around, uses his strength to get them jobs and in the end he treats Lenny in the same way that Candy treats his dog. He shoots him in the head for his own good. So it's uh, decision that he didn't take lightly and it's a decision that he perhaps took as a result of that feeling of responsibility. We also need to remember when it comes to Lenny and animals the foreshadowing of him petting the mouse and killing it because he petted it too hard. That combined with the anecdote of the girl in weed give us those ingredients of 
that that idea that something bad is going to happen at the end that involves Lenny doing something like that and killing something almost through kindness. And remember, when you talk about things like foreshadowing in your responses, that does technically reference structure because it is that dramatic structural device. And for the WJEC um, exam specification, in order to hit those higher bands, you do have to talk about structure in some way. So if it is relevant to your question and if it is relevant to the response that you are trying to give, then it is worth mentioning uh, things like this if you can. So we've talked about Lenny's physical strength and his uh, childlike nature and also this idea of his animalistic tendencies. And all of those things, when you put them together, um, gives you a hint as to the potential danger of someone like Lenny and the fact that he is actually quite a dangerous person or could be quite a dangerous person. And essentially he is a killer. He's the gentlest character in the novel and he does like to stroke things and look after them and he's kind-hearted as Slim uh, pointed out but he is also the most destructive and if you look at the points of violence that he demonstrates throughout the novel then they do gradually get worse which again gives that idea of the destiny or the fate that he will end up doing something really bad one day and of course he does. He is dangerous and violent, and he attacks Curly and Curly's wife, he kills mice, he throws his dead puppy across the barn, and it's these things that we see that really start to build up this picture, and when we read the book the second time or the third time, those pieces slot into place, where it almost seems in inevitable that Lenny's tendencies, combined with all these other features that we've talked about, would lead him to commit the crime that he does. And it's fear that makes Lenny hold on to Curly's wife. When she first starts struggling against him, Lenny is in a panic and he cries with fright. But quite often his fear turns to anger. So Steinbeck actually mentions on more than one occasion that Lenny is angry with Curly's wife. And he's so angry that he shakes her to death. So actually it's his anger that causes her death. Um, even though it starts out with fear. But as readers, we don't see that in kind of the cold light of day. We feel sorry for him because he isn't malicious, he doesn't want to cause pain, and we can't help but feel that it's not his fault because of that innocent, childlike demeanour that he has. It's George that tells him to get Curly when he fights him, and he kills the animals and Curly's wife because he can't control his own strength as well. So there, again, is that sense of hopelessness that we are kind of encouraged to feel as readers. George explains to Slim that when Curly attacked Lenny, he was just scared and he didn't know what to do. And in Weed, Lenny held onto the girl's dress because it's the only thing he can think to do. So again, we've got this idea of that sense of hopelessness, that despite his gentle nature and gentle personality, we have someone who in high tension situations um, it is, is almost forced into doing these things and committing these violent acts and actually you know when you step away from the situation he, he did commit a crime but we we feel very much on his side and Steinbeck gives us a lot of different hints to this and, and builds up this relationship between the reader and Lenny throughout the novella so that by the time this happens we are totally you know sold when it comes to his personality um another character that kind of uh solidifies this opinion for us would be slim because he says that lenny ain't a bit mean and we've mentioned that before he and the fact that slim is that person that demonstrates good nature and, and friendship and being open-minded and, and being that idyllic person and the prince of the ranch and royalty uh in this time in this uh you know, time of prejudice and, uh, you know, negative feelings towards people. The fact that Slim is the wisest and most trusted character uh, in the novella, you, we're going to believe what he says. We're going to agree with him that Lenny doesn't hurt anything or anyone on purpose because out of all the characters, he's the one that seems to be the most reasoned. So Lenny really isn't a bad man. He just has trouble controlling himself and he is capable of showing kindness in his own way. Um, and you know, there's there's lots of sort of silly moments in the book where we see that. So uh, an example would be when they talk about ketchup, and he says that he wouldn't eat any George; he'd leave it all for you. So he's demonstrating that there's there's true friendship there. He's demonstrating that 
in his world, it's quite a big deal, um, you know, he would give that over to George. So that relationship, again, is shown to be really strong. So if you were asked to, to talk about Lenny in an essay question in the exam, you need to remember that you have to link this character to context. And Steinbeck uses all of these characters to represent certain groups of people or certain stereotypes uh, of 1930s America. So once you've identified that, then it's quite easy to link them to those contextual factors. Now, there's a few different things you could say. As an example, um, the most obvious one would most likely be the that Lenny is used to highlight the discrimination that existed against people with disabilities. So in his case, mental, and the fact that such people were outsiders. And we've already mentioned the idea that people called him cuckoo or dumb as hell. He also reflects the vulnerability of disabled people in 1930s society because of the lack of welfare state, his total reliance on George to take care of him, to make sure that he's okay, means that if George wasn't there, he'd end up being killed or locked up. And even that final, you know, the, the fact that George kills Danny at the end, even that final moment is an act of kindness from George because George knows what would happen to Lenny if they got hold of him and he wants to protect Lenny. So again, there's that idea of that protection there, George protecting him because society won't protect him. He also represents the idea that most dreams were unattainable, so uh, all of these characters you can link to dreams in some way, um, and the idea that Lenny holds on to that dream and really uh, focuses on it, especially in times of stress, represents the idea that, that people clung on to those dreams even though there was no way that they were ever going to achieve them. He also represents, along with George, typical ranch workers in some ways. Now you could also talk about how he differs in some ways. So don't feel like you can't discuss the idea that he breaks normality. I mean, if you were going to write an essay on Slim, for example, you'd talk about the way that he broke uh, kind of the normal stereotypical attitudes of the time. And you can do that the same here. So this friendship is atypical of 1930s America. So again, no stable job, always on the move, itinerant workers, but then you can also talk about this idea of the responsibility and the reliance and the friendship with each other. And then emphasising the sexist and racial prejudices of society because he doesn't understand them. So it's, it's quite an interesting angle to come from and maybe one that if you're aiming for those higher grades you could explore because it's a bit more abstract. So his naivety kind of stands in stark contrast to the other attitudes of the workers who are perhaps more experienced um, and understand more the connotations and innuendos behind things. So there's just a few examples of how you could link Lenny to context and also some uh, notes on him as well. Of course, for the exam, you would have to learn some quotes too, um, but they're things that you'll go through and revise yourself. But hopefully this gives you a bit of an introduction or a confidence booster um, when looking at the character of Lenny and maybe gives you some ideas of where to start in terms of collecting those quotes. Thank you very much for listening and tune in to the next one. You've been listening to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJEC. This podcast is available to download from castbox.com, so if you're listening on YouTube, the link will be in the description below, where you can download these to listen offline, on your phone and on the go. Thank you for listening, and good luck with your revision.